Hi everyone, this is Khaled from GNS3 Talk, and in uh, this video we'll be looking at the uh, fourth ticket of the CCMP T shoot uh, exam. Well, uh, open GNS3, and here you go, this ad has got the GNS3 Talk channel. Uh, so I'm going to open a project and I'm going to choose uh, ticket 4. I'm not too sure whether I actually had a look at ticket 4 or ticket 3 before. I've been working on this. Um, videos since the morning trying to organize things so just bear with me okay so worked on ticket 4 okay so ticket 5 will be working at now alright that's a beautiful beautiful topology it's highly recommended that you actually build the topology yourself it's, um, it's easy to configure and um, as stated multiple times before uh, you need to read the uh, problem on each particular ticket because the problem can change so don't assume it's actually always a client one not being able to reach a web server uh, 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 with the dot .241 IP address it could be something else but the majority of these tickets is really client cannot the client one or the clients really cannot reach the web server Okay, so I'm gonna bring up uh, my console, and um, a piece I, I, I often advise you're not supposed to actually touch the web server or route outside or even check him out. So um, uh, we always need to go to the client one and check its IP address. If you're using a Windows machine, use the IP config because this is what you'll be getting in the exam. You use IP config, and please do not use show IP interface brief we're all using it here because it's actually a Cisco router being emulated okay so it's got an IP address I'm going to go ping it obviously it's not gonna reach because this is one of the tickets that's really client one not being able to reach the web server okay un unreachable uh, just like what's stated before uh, my technique is really to check out and see if I could trace route from the DSW1 so what I'm going to go is trace route instead of ping 209.65.200.241 okay again it's uh, similar to the previous ticket there is a problem when actually the route hits router 1 and stops so there's no reachability really I, it, with this GNS3 you probably need to wait uh, probably less than a minute until the BGP session may come up because you know, you may uh, you know that the BGP rely entirely on the TCP uh, IP stack before it comes up so it looks like that it hasn't changed yes it is stopping still stopping at router 1 um, what could be the reason well I'm going to jump to router 4 now and see if I could actually do a, tra a trace route and see whether it actually can push me or pass me all the way to the web server so router 1 ah uh, sorry router 4 uh, the password is Cisco actually I should have changed it but I uh, left it as the way it was uh, when I first downloaded it alright so I'm gonna go trace route uh, 209 Okay, so we're stopping at 10.1.1.1 again. So look, I'm gonna go jump to the 10.1 and see what's going on. So I'm gonna go ping 209.65.200.241. Okay, so uh, router one, for some reason, cannot ping the web server. So it has nothing to do with the rest of our network. It's really just a one interface problem. Um, let me see if I could ping the. Uh, the uh, neighbor, which is uh, this one, 226. 65200, ah, uh, sorry, 226, yes, it is 226. I thought I was, I was pinging the wrong IP address. And again, this is not really pingable either. Sh show IP BGP summary. We know, well, there is a BGP adjacency that's supposed to be uh, active, established, sorry, between router 1 and router are outside. However, you can see it is in the active state. Okay, I'm going to go show run and um, section BGP. 
bring it back up. So network 209 65 200 224 mask 255 which is slash 30 this is correct network is correct neighbor 209 65 200 226 which is correct and remote, remote autonomous system number is correct as well hmm okay I'm going to check out the interface here and see what sort of configuration it has show run interface serial I believe it's from one dot uh, one slash zero just hover your mouse on top of it yep one slash zero oh, I can't do it Ah, oh, section Okay, so it doesn't really work this way. I thought the section uh, uh, command would work with it. Okay, so where is the outside? Here you go. This is our interface. So IP address 209.65.200.225. Yep, our neighbor is 226. So the IP address is correct. It's uh, It's got an IP access group in. So there is an access group applied to any incoming packets on to that p interface so anything that comes from the world into router one there's an IP access applied to it we need to check this out we'll keep going now IP not outside alright so this is the outside um, uh, interface of the NAT and these are all default values anyway so look I need to check up the IP access group here 40 and see what we could see uh, so I'm gonna com keep going down into 40 so we've checked the BGP, we've checked the uh, the interface, all we need to do is really check the access list and see whether the access list is doing anything that's stopping the IP, the BGP adjacency from forming. So we see it's actually uh, permitting 209 -65 -200 -241. It's denying 10.1.0. I don't know why it's even denying these values because we're not really expecting 10.1 or 10.2 to come from this serial interface. However, I could see that the access list is not really permitting the neighbor. So the neighbor, because these access lists have a implicit deny, the 209-65-200-224 network slash 30 isn't really being permitted and this is the reason we are not re we don't really know what the 241 is the BGP session isn't being established and why we can't ping the uh, neighbor so three things we're not learning the 240 uh, prefix we're not being we're not able to establish the BGP sessions to due to the access list and we're not being we're not able to even uh, connect to the router so how do we answer this ticket now what's the problem the problem is router one what is causing the problem well it's really an access list problem and how could we fix it I mean according to this uh, 40 access list all we could do is really enable and add 209.65.200.224 slash 30 into the statement access list 40 so what I'm going to do now is really uh, config t and IP access list its uh, value is 40 so it is standard access list and I'm going to say permit 209.65.200.224 and because this is slash 30 so it becomes 000 dot 3 and don't worry about logs. Okay, so that's it. Control Z, and I'm going to go show run again. And I want to ch check that the uh, access list has been configured properly. Okay, so yes, there are permit two permit statement, regardless of where they are. As long as there is no deny any after the first one everything sh seems to be okay and here you can see from the console message that the BGP session has come up as well so what I'm going to do now is show IP BGP summary and you can see we're receiving two prefixes one prefix is really this one 
and the other prefix is this one. So if I go show IP BGP, okay, so the router now knows where 241 is, which is part of the sub subnet. So the BGP session has established. I'm pretty sure we'll, you are able to ping uh, the uh, the neighbor, and obviously this is this is given because obviously the BGP session is established. 241. 209. Yep, it's working. Now all I need to go is again I'm going to the client and hoping that this would work. Yep, everything seems to be working. So that's about it really. So ticket number five is ticked and there's are about seven tickets to go. Well thanks uh, for watching and please uh, let me know if you need any help or if you have any questions about this ticket. Thank you.